Thank you for joining me on Ladies in Tech. This is Binary Numbering Systems. Very important numbering system need to know when we get to programming machines. But before you go, make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on a lesson. This video is going to be on binary numbering systems. Decimal base 10 numbering systems. To understand the binary numbering system, let's first look at base 10. The day-to-day -day numbering system that we use is called base 10 or the decimal system because the place values are powers of 10. Each of the 10 digits, 0 through 9, represent a certain quantity. Quantities can be expressed through 0 through 9 before running out of digits. If you wish to express a value greater than 9, you use two or more digits and the position of each digit within a number tells you the magnitude it re represents. For example, you wish to express the quantity 562. You use, by respect to positions in the number, the digit 5 represents the quantity 500, the digit 6 represents 60, and the digit 2 represents the quantity of 2. For example, 562 means 5 times 10 to the, to the power of 2 plus 6 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 2 times 10 to the power of 0. The decimal number system has a base of 10. The position of each digit in a decimal number indicates the magnitude of the quantity represented and can be assigned a weight. The weights for whole numbers are positive powers of 10 that increase right to left, beginning with 10 to the power of 0, which equals 1. For fraction numbers, the weights are negative powers of 10, beginning with 10 to the negative 1. Here's our decimal places. Here's a decimal place, and you can see to the left, we have positives. We have 10 to the power of 0, 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, and on the other side of the decimal place, we have 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 2, and 10 to the negative 3. Example 1. Express the decimal number 47 as a sum of values of each digit. The digit 4 has a weight of 10, which is 10 to the power of 1, as indicated by its position. The digit 7 has a weight of 1, which is indicated by 10 to the power of 0, as indicated by its position. So 47 equals 4 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 7 times 10 to the power of 0, which will equal 4 times 10 binary plus 4 times 1. System base 2. Counting in binary is similar to counting in decimal. When using the decimal numbering system, counting you start at 0 and count up to 9 before you run out of digits. Then you start another digit position to the left and continue counting 10 through 99. At the point where you've used all your two digit combinations, a third digit position is needed to count from 100 through to 999. The same happens when counting in binary, base 2. Begin counting 0, then 1. At this point, you have used both available digits, so a second position is needed and continue. 10, then 1, 1. When you exhausted all the combination positions with two digits, Positions add a third position. With three digit positions, you continue to count up 100, 101, 110, and 111. To count higher, you need to add another position, and so on. Shown on the table on the next slide is a binary count 0 through 15. Notice all the odd numbers with least significant digit, the LSB, is 1. Here's the table here, the decimal numbers 0 through 15, and here are the binary numbers. And you can see the least significant digit, which is the furthest to the right column. All the odd numbers are 1. In the table beside, 4 bits are required to count from 0 to 15, with n being the number of bits, the highest number that can be counted is 2 to the power of n minus 1. Therefore, largest decimal number equals 2n minus 1. Example, with 5 bits, n equals 5, you can count from 0 to 31. 2 to the power of 5 minus 1, so that's 32, minus 1 is 31. 
The weighted structure of the binary numbers, the rightmost bit, is a least significant bit in a binary whole number. It has a weight of 2 to the power of 0, which equals 1. The weight increases from right to left by a power of 2 for each bit depending on the size of the binary number. Fraction numbers can be represented in binary by placing bits to the right of the decimal place. The fractional number with the weight of the bit is 2 to the power of negative 1, which equals 0 0.5. The leftmost bit is the most significant bit. You can see here we have the decimal place and 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4. And if we go on the other side of the decimal, we get 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3, and 2 to the negative 4. All the bits to the left of the decimal points have weights that are positive powers of 2 and are whole numbers. The weight doubles for each positive power of 2 and the weight is half for each negative power of 2. You can see the figure below. You can see here, this is our positive side of our decimal. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 2 to the power of 6 is 64. 2 to the power of 7 is 128. 2 to the power of 8 is 256. If we look on the other side here, we go to the negative. So 2 to the power of negative 1, it's half, 0.5. 2 to the power of negative 2 is a quarter, 0.25. 2 to the power of negative 3 is an eighth, or 0.125. 2 to the power of negative 4 is a sixteenth, or 0 0.0625. 2 to the power of negative 5, 1 32nd, and so on. Binary to decimal conversions. The decimal value of any binary number can be found by adding the weights of all bits that are 1 and discarding the weights of all the bits that are 0. Example, convert the binary whole number 1101101 to decimal. Determine the weight of each of the bit that is 1, then find the sum of the weights. So here are our weighting for each of our columns. Starting from 2 to the power of 0, which is 1, all the way through to 2 to the power of 6. This is our binary number and what we're going to do is we're going to go, okay, we're going to go 2 to the power of 6 plus 2 to the power of 5 plus, there's nothing in this column so we're going to leave it blank, plus 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 0. You can see here it was blank as well. So 2 to the power of 6 is 64 plus 2 to the power of 5 which is 32 plus 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, plus 4, plus 1, which gives us a total, if we add all those together, of a decimal number of 109. Now we're going to look at a, a different way of going from binary number to decimal number. So from base 2 to base 10. So this is more of a graphical representation. So if we have a binary number here, 00111, and we have the weighting for each of the columns that those ones are located in, and what you're going to do is that for that first column we got the 1 and we have the 2 to the power of 0 which is 1. So what we're going to do, we're going to say 1 because we have a 1 in that column times 1 because it's worth 1 equals 1. Then the next column we're going to go 1 times 2 which is 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So if it is a 1 in that column, we put a 1 there and then you put the weighting of the column. So 1 times 2 is 2. For the next one, we have 1 times 4, because 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and 1 times 4 is 4. For the next column, we have a 0. So we have a 0 times, because 0, we have no 1 in here, 0 times 8, because 2 to the power of 3 is 8, which gives us a 0. And then for the last column, we have a 0 as well, times 16, because 2 to the power of 4 is 16, which equals 0. Now once you've done that for all the columns, you're going to take all the answers for each of those columns, and you're going to add them together, and you're going to get 7. So that's how you convert this binary number into 7. Let's do that one more time. 
we got another binary number, 10010. And we put the weightings of each of the columns so we know what they're worth. And we start bringing it over. So in the first column we have a zero, so it's going to be zero times the value of the column, column which is one, two to the power of zero is one, which equals zero. The next column we have a one, so it's going to be one times two, which equals two. Next column we have a zero, so zero times four equals zero. Next column we have a zero as well, times eight equals zero. And for the final column we have a one, so it's going to be one times 16 equals 16. Now we take the answers of each of those. So we have a two and a 16 that we can add together, and our answer is 18. So also, we also if we have a number and it says a B at the end, it denotes a binary prefix. So with these examples here, we have 101012. So with that little two at the end, that's indicating that that number is base two. So it's not decimal where it'd be um, 10,101. It is a binary number, so 10101. It's the same as saying 10101B. So that two and that B are interchangeable. So with this one here, we're going to begin adding them to get our decimal number. So here it started with this column, which is worth, worth two to the power of four. So one times two to the power of four plus zero times two to the power of three for the next column. One times two to the power of two plus zero times two to the power of one plus one times zero, two to the power of zero, which equals 16 plus four plus one is 21. Another example here, we have a 10111 base two numbering system or 10111 binary. So with adding all those columns up, we have our first one, which is one times two to the power of four, because we have a one in that column, zero times two to the power of three, plus one times two to the power of two, plus one times two to the power of one, plus one times two to the power of zero. So all that would equal 16 plus four plus two plus one, which is another way to go from decimal to binary is a repeat division by two method. A symptomatic method of converting whole numbers from decimal to binary is the repeated division by two method. The least significant bit is the remainder of the first product. So if we have the decimal number 45, we're going to divide that by 2, which is going to equal 22, and with that we have a remainder of 1. We continue, we'll take that 22, divide it by 2, which equals 11, and we have a remainder of zero. We'll take 11, divide it by two, which is five, with a remainder of one. Well, five divided by two equals two, with a remainder of one. And two divided by two equals one, with a remainder of zero. And finally, one divided by two equals zero, with a remainder of one. Now that we have all the remainders, we'll start at the very top, the 45. That first remainder is going to be our least significant bit. The zero is going to be the next, next, and so on and to our most significant bit. So the binary number is 101101. That concludes this lecture on binary numbering systems. Please post any comments or questions below and hope to see you again. Thank you.